Hello again, everybody. Um, I thought I'd follow up um, a video that I made actually a couple or a few years ago um, about retarding inlet cam timings and the benefits that uh, that can give, um, especially in view of um, if you've got a high compression ratio and uh, you're worried about uh, the engine suffering pinking. Now, obviously, uh, I've discussed how I like to increase uh, the needle jet sizes in uh, a lot of the machines I work on and run, uh, which also helps combat um, things like pinking. And um, it's better, I've found, to sort of deal with the matter in other ways than retarding the ignition timing. That's not really very good for an engine at all, and certainly not uh, the most productive way of uh, getting the most power out of an engine that's been tuned and uh, or even in uh, some cases hasn't been tuned but if you get pinking um, a larger needle jet can help uh, in a very large way in um, stopping pinking uh, but where I spoke previously and I'll provide a link to the video that I made about retarding the the inlet cam timings in um, certainly Royal Enfield bullet engines which I've uh, done so in countless uh, 350 and 500 engines whether they've been tuned or not although um, usually it works best with uh, an engine that's had the uh, compression ratio uh, raised somewhat I'm just gonna have a look here now I've got an original Redditch factory manual here and uh, hopefully if anyone wants to zoom in um, we should be able to see that the um, inlet valve timing is the one we're interested in they've got the inlet valve as closing at um, 60 degrees after bottom dead center so by the time I retard the inlet cam by one tooth on um, a bullet engine certainly one tooth equals 18 degrees of crankshaft travel or rotation so what I've done here the red mark on the timing disc shows me the uh, 60 degrees after bottom dead center position and I've already been measuring only roughly with a vernier um, so there might be a little bit of uh, margin for error but nothing very much maybe 0.5 of a millimeter or so here and there um, I've got the engine set now the crankshaft set at 60 degrees after bottom dead center or where the inlet valve would normally shut and um, I've already measured but basically if I turn I'll, I'll take a measurement from here at the moment now if I put the end of the uh, vernier down the edge of the bore to meet the shoulder of the piston I get a measurement and um, I can already confirm that for 60 degrees after bottom dead center when the piston is on its way up on the compression stroke with the um, inlet valve shut the side or edge of the piston crown is at 74 millimeters before top dead center now if I turn the engine 18 degrees and take another measurement the piston has obviously traveled upwards some way and the piston is actually now at uh, 62 millimeters before top dead center rather than 74 so it's traveled upwards eight millimeters so the inlet valve shuts when the piston is eight millimeters further up the bore on the compression stroke than uh, on standard timing so eight millimeters when you factor in the fact that sometimes I shorten a cylinder barrel by two millimeters and fit high compression pistons and whatever there's eight millimeters there that we've sort of gained if you like where we're not building such severe cylinder pressure because the uh, piston is obviously eight millimeters higher up the bore when the inlet valve shuts so when you get up to top dead center the actual although the compression ratio has remained the same the actual physical compression and the cylinder pressure 
will be a lot lower by the time you reach top dead centre. Uh, and just before, obviously, for firing when you're at full advance. So that is why it's very productive uh, in the reduction of uh, pinking. And it also, it makes the firing pulses or strokes far smoother. Um, which is why an engine appears, well not appears to run smoother, it actually does run smoother. The flip side of it all is, is that although you lose a little bit of bottom end punch, you actually gain more power than you've lost at the bottom end in the mid range and the higher rev range of the engine. And I've proved it time and time again it works, but I've never actually done this until about a quarter of an hour ago where I've actually measured how much further up the bore the piston will have travelled before the inlet valve shuts when you retard the inlet cam timing by 18 degrees or one tooth. Now obviously you've got things like three-way timing pinions and so on. You don't have to sort of retard the timing by 18 degrees if you don't want to. But in a lot of cases I have. Um, obviously another reason is it keeps the uh, inlet valve a little bit further away from the... Um, piston when the uh, the valve is starting to open on the other top dead center because the inlet valve opens that much later so uh, it's a win-win situation really um, and like I say this is the first time I've actually sort of uh, put a degree disc on and measured the difference in piston height when it's traveling up the bore on the compression stroke um, before the valve shuts and that is obviously eight millimeters when you think about it i take two millimeters off cylinder barrels to raise compression ratios um you can get half millimeter thick uh, solid copper head gaskets to use instead of the standard one millimeter thick head gasket half a millimeter to raise the compression ratio well you think about how much eight millimeters can give you and obviously dependent on the actual valve timing and the position of the uh, piston up the bore when it when the valve shuts um, you're not going to get eight millimeters of piston travel for every 18 degrees it's obviously going to reduce near a bottom dead center and near a top dead center but in the mid stroke when the valve is shut and the piston's coming up that is why your cylinder pressure will end up a lot lower than it would be if you left the timing on standard and then probably with a high compression piston like I've got here you would experience all sorts of pinking and uh, perhaps have a very unhappy engine and you might think that uh, oh, I need to retard the ignition timing to stop this I need to retard the ignition timing some more okay I'll put a larger needle jet in that'll help me but the big one is retarding the inlet cam timing um, like I say I've done it by a tooth in lots of engines you don't have to go so severe as 18 degrees if you don't want to and obviously it won't work quite so well with engines that have got one camshaft with inlet and exhaust lobes attached to the one gear um, but there's plenty of British bike engines and others around where you've got two camshafts and you can move one independently of the other and it works really well on the end field but uh, I never realized myself how much uh, difference it would make 18 degrees for the amount of piston travel you got up the bore before the valve closes and that is why it's very useful in combating pinking and also like I say a nice flip side of it is is it also helps pr power production higher up the rev range um, I originally only retarded an inlet cam to get the inlet valve out the way of the piston uh, around top dead center on the overlap that was my main reasoning for doing it and I thought I'll just uh, try it and uh, that's the, the inlet valve out the way and out of harm's way of hitting the piston and uh, to my delight I found that I also ended up with a far more peppy engine although uh, obviously uh, not so much a plodder anymore but that is why it all sort of ties in and I like to retard inlet cam timings when I'm tuning an engine as well as raising the compression ratio and increasing the jet size, uh, the needle jet size at least. Um, probably the main jet as well over standard when I tune an engine. Um, and try as best as possible 
to keep the ignition timing the same because uh, if you retard the ignition timing to get rid of pinking you're really only masking a problem and you're creating others you're robbing the engine of power and putting the temperatures up this also with the piston being higher up the bore and producing less actual cylinder pressure also helps keep temperatures down so uh, it really is one worth uh, considering and uh, like I say that is a big difference eight millimeters on the upstroke and uh, it works really well I've proved it I've even proved it on the dyno so it's one that uh, is worth considering to anyone who's uh, perhaps uh, thinking about doing that so I just thought I'd share that that is a fresh hot off the press discovery for me eight millimeters difference of uh, piston travel up the bore quite a lot I would say